All righty, I think we'll get started here. Uh, my name is Devin Robinson uh, with the recruitment team here at Fanshawe College, also joined by Riker Nyberg here. Uh, we're going to be chatting with you today about residence and off-campus housing options at Fanshawe College. I'm going to start out with a little bit of an intro. Riker and I typically go back and forth a little bit talking about Fanshawe College, the options, some stories from our experiences. Then we also have the questions in the chat if you'd like as well. Um, I graduated from Fanshawe way back in 2002 from the Public Relations and Corporate Communications program. Uh, so I'm the, uh, the older person in the, in the chat today. I've mm -hmm. uh, been working at Fanshawe now for about 17 years. So, uh, so quite a long time there as well. Uh, so I know a little bit, although um, Riker's been doing a lot of, lot of chats with prospective students throughout the COVID-19 situation. So he's really up to date on his info and, and, uh, and has it uh, down pat. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to Riker uh, to introduce himself. Uh, hi, folks. So my name is Riker. I am a Fanshawe graduate from 2016 and been working with the recruitment team for almost three years now. Um, and actually, both Devin and I went to Wilfrid Laurier University previously, so we've got an interesting uh, shared story there. Um, and we've also experienced both college and university, so can talk a bit about what those are like and how they're different. I did see some of you were on previous calls, so you'll have to forgive us for going over some of this stuff again. This is mostly for the new participants. Um, we want to get into the etiquette of the meeting, so I already did drop that information in the chat, but if you guys could just keep your um, mics and preferably video off just to avoid distractions. That would be great. Um, we are going to answer questions that are dropped into the chat either during the flow of the presentation or after wherever it uh, becomes um, relevant to answer it. So look out for those answers. Um, so we, we both lived in residence. However, we didn't live in residence at uh, Fanshawe specifically. So like I said, we both went to Wilfrid Laurier. So we can talk about our experiences in residence and uh, Devin, I'll let you go first. Talk a little bit about your residence experience. Yeah, so um, I'm from Delhi, Ontario, uh, a very small uh, farming community. I grew up on a farm and I had an amazing first year experience uh, at university in residence solely based on the fact that I was able to meet uh, so many different people. I think I froze here. So basically, I was able to meet so many different people, and uh, we were dormitory style, which Riker and I will get into a little bit more. But with dormitory style, uh, you'll see that essentially I shared, we were about maybe four feet apart, me and my roommate in, a sing, in single beds each, so we could reach out and give each other high fives at night. Still a great experience, uh, but dormitory style was definitely something a little bit different. And uh, the residence I stayed in was probably built Oh, 1930s or 40s or something like that. So it wasn't the most modern facility either. Uh, but again, a great overall experience and a great way to meet people and get yourself immersed into the uh, post-secondary experience at whatever campus you choose to attend. Riker, what about yourself? Yeah, so I actually stayed in the same residence building, but in a newer wing. So I had a single bedroom. Um, unlike Fanshawe, though, it was a single bed in a tiny little shoe closet. So the space in Fanshawe is much nicer than what I had, but what I will say that was great about my resident experience is the proximity to campus. It helps you get to class and get to services so much, um, but also uh, the people that you meet in residence. So the one big advantage of residence was I met uh, all of my best friends. To this day, I still travel all over Ontario to go visit the people I met in residence. And it helped me find people to live with in a city that I was not familiar with um, after my first year in residence. So. We all lived in residence together, the people that I lived with after, and then we went out together and found a place to live with off campus after, which is typically what Fanshawe students do as well, but it is a great way to build a social life in a new community, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll move on to some general information about what residents and housing are at Fanshawe. So Devin, you wanna go ahead with that? Yeah, so I just wanted to start off by chatting a little bit about Fanshawe and why student housing and residents, so student housing in the community and student residents on campus uh, is so important for us as a college specifically. And that's because Fanshawe has a bit of a unique place in the college system with how many students we attract from distance. So about half of our students that are coming directly from high school and almost 40% of our students that are coming after some experience uh, with life, be that being in the workforce for, for a bit or whatever the case may be, are coming from you know over an hour away. 
Uh, so that's not really commutable distance. So with Fanshawe, it's really important for us to have a great residence set up to ensure our students are comfortable and looked after while they're with us studying. Uh, and residence or off campus is a great option for that. London is also a great student city in that uh, you have about 50,000 students attending between us and Western University every fall in London. So there's a lot of student housing available throughout the city of London. Uh, personally for myself, I always recommend uh, keeping it as simple as possible in your first year, be that living on campus or very close to campus. So it's just a quick walk to get to your class. And as you get more familiar with your surroundings in the city, the bus system, all that fun stuff, then you can branch out a little bit if you wanted to live a little bit closer to downtown or things along those lines. So there's some different options there. Uh, we have the largest residence in the Ontario College System, so with most students in residence, and we have guaranteed residence for first year students. Most of our students will only live in residence in their first year. Uh, then they'll kind of gather their friend group and kind of move out into the community. Uh, we do have barrier free suites and accessibility and things along those lines that are factored into residence as well. And uh, we do have, as Riker mentioned, there are some great advantages to residents. Convenience, security, connections to campus and campus life. Uh, a lot of, a variety of different reasons why, why residence is great. Uh, with off-campus housing, that can be kind of a really intimidating uh, thing to kind of handle, signing your first lease and, and looking at houses and where do I live and where I don't I in a strange city. So we have a couple different things set up to help you with that. We have our off-campus housing office and listings. And so with that, the students are able to log on uh, where our residence information is on our website and actually check listings, almost like an MLS listing if you're looking at houses. And it'll let you know some of the key details about the places that you're looking at. That could be how far away they are from campus. If they're on a bus ride, do they allow pets? Residence doesn't allow pets, not even fish, but some places in the community might. Parking, all that fun stuff. Uh, we always get asked about fish, right? Do you get asked about have fish in residence often? I've been asked, yeah. It's like uh, people think a fish would be the only acceptable animal. Yeah. They unfortunately won't let fish in residence either. Yeah. So we get uh, that plate. Those listings we have are great because one, we've never received a complaint about the landlord before by a student. So it's not 100% vetting, but there is uh, that going on. And we only place houses where we would like in apartments where we'd like students to live. So that's a great option, whether it's in your first year and you're looking at off-campus housing or as you go throughout. We also have a gentleman named Glenn Matthews, who's our off-campus housing mediation officer, an amazing resource for our students. We share him with the University of Western Ontario, so he will have office hours on our campus. And with Glenn, uh, you're able to make book an appointment with him, chat about uh, the lease before you sign it. If you're having challenges with your landlord or roommates throughout the year, he's a great point of contact and resource to help you uh, with any of your housing needs. Uh, while you're a student at Fanshawe, which is great. Uh, if you're looking at campuses in Simcoe, St. Thomas, Woodstock, Huron, Bruce, places along those lines, we don't have official residences set up there, but they have lots of off-campus housing options for you. And those individual campuses, you can connect with me and Riker, and we can refer you to the person at those campuses if you'd like, uh, can help you uh, find a suitable accommodation in those cities uh, while you go to school there. They do get uh, students from distance as well. And with that, they do have options for, for living in their community. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Riker to chat a little bit about our two different housing options that we have with our residents at Fanshawe. Yeah, great. So sorry, I got a dog running around freaking out in the back. So sorry if I look distracted. Uh, so there are two different kinds of residents on uh, at Fanshawe's London campus. So we have a townhouse and a traditional or apartment style residence. So the townhouses are actually just adjacent from our main gates. So while they are technically off campus, you're still looking at a very reasonable and short uh, walk to your classes. So the townhouses are a great option for people who still want to have a whole home experience. They want to have a kitchen, a dining room, some backyard space, and those are six bedroom, two and a half bath units. So in those, you're still going to get a single bedroom. You're not going to have to share a bedroom with anybody like at some older residences at colleges and universities but you're still gonna have a deep freezer in your, in your uh, kitchen. You've got a stove, oven, micro, uh, microwave, fridge, all of those amenities. You've got a powder room on your main floor. You've got a bathroom in the basement and a full bathroom in the second floor. Um, so it's more of a complete living area. So a lot of people prefer that if they'd like to, you know, be able to separate from campus, step off of campus at the end of the day. Um, if you're looking for something different to that, you're looking for more of that traditional dorm style residence experience, 
that's where you're going to look at our traditional residences. So those are three apartment style buildings that are four bedroom, two bathroom. Again, they're single bedroom occupancy. You get a double bed in every room, a corner desk, and it's included with wireless internet, wired internet and cable as well in every bedroom. You are going to see in the common spaces in these units that there is a TV with cable. So you have that feature there. But one of the big differences between the townhouse and the traditional is that the traditional residences do not have a kitchen enclosed in your unit. So you're not actually going to have a stove and oven, but you will have a microwave, a sink and a fridge. So you have a small kitchenette space. Because of that, uh, traditional residence has a meal plan of $1,200, which is uh, mandatory. The reason for that is you have limited access to a kitchen. There are kitchens in the buildings, but not in your unit again. So we want students to have some money to spend that's saved away so you can spend money on all of the different campus resources. So we have the Oasis, that's kind of like a fresh cafeteria near all the residences. We have a um, Harvey's, Pizza Pizza, Subway, Starbucks, Three Tim Hortons. We have a sushi, we have ramen, we have uh, Asian restaurant called Bok Choy. We have Smokes Poutine. So there are tons of options on campus. There's also the Outback Shack Bar and Grill. Um, you won't go hungry on campus. You won't be without coffee. So all that stuff is there. And our resident students on campus have $1,200 allocated to spend at that. $1,200 sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually not when you think about eight months of meals three times a day, seven days a week. So we use that as a benchmark. You're welcome to add more money if you do go through it. Um, and if you don't go through it in your upper years, you can actually use that money as flex dollars towards services and amenities on campus as well as food. So I wanted to show you the pages for the different types of residents. So you could see some of the stats there and the figures about them. So I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly to show you guys that. So this is some information about the traditional residences. So we have three of those again, Falcon, Peregrine and Merlin. And everybody's usually concerned about the cost with residents. So I wanna show you that breakdown. So the cost of the traditional residence is $9,190. And that includes a $250 security deposit upon application and a $1,200 mandatory meal plan. So like it says, over eight months, it works out to about 3750 per week, which is not a lot. So we do uh, see a lot of students still go to the grocery store and traditional, bring some food on to, to cook in the kitchen or have some microwavable meals, things of that nature. So there's information about traditional and we'll switch to Kestrel Court, which is our townhouse quickly. And I'll also say on both of those links, you can see the take a look at our townhouses. There's also take a look at our apartments and it's a virtual tour of those. So townhouse is a little cheaper. You're going to see it's $7,585 or you may find yourself in the opportunity to rent one of these smaller bedrooms in those spaces, which there's one of those in every unit, and that would be $7,250. So that's over the eight months. So typically the way that people pay is the deposit upon applying, and then they pay per semester. But one thing I will say that's great about Fanshawe's residents is they're very flexible and they're willing to work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis about payment plans and accommodations and all kinds of stuff. Uh, the final thing I want to point out here is if you are a person with accessibility concerns and you have some barriers, we do have barrier free spaces in our traditional residences. So every floor will have a two bedroom occupancy accessible room, which has bigger bathrooms, bigger door frames, those kinds of things. So if you are a person with accessibility concerns, um, fear not, we have that space available on campus. And I will just reiterate again that applications are Available now, um, we do recommend people apply before May 1st because we guarantee residents all May 1st, sorry, we guarantee residents to all first year students who apply by May 1st, which is tomorrow. Um, another thing related to the application is people are concerned about COVID. So I have sought out um, people from residents and, and been given assurances that there will be uh, deposit refunds in the event that people are not able to live on campus. So uh, don't stress too much about losing money in a situation where you won't be able to live there. Um, they are taking care of people in that way. I just wanna see if we have any questions that related to this. Uh, someone asked about summer residents. So if you finish your program and you wanna remain in Fanshawe's residence, uh, few people do that, but it is an option. I, think they be I believe they keep one building open for people to rent and we're not looking for people to go through the same application process there. They just would reach out to residence acceptance at fanshawc.ca and say, I'm looking for accommodations. Uh, that's not really high demand, so you shouldn't have any problems finding that. But I will say that we do not, uh, there is a chance you will not get a spot in residence if you apply after May 1st. So just keep that in mind. Um, the application process. So there were some questions about this. 
So when you apply, you'll be able to choose your preference of style. And if you're choosing the traditional residences, you are also able to choose your building. So Falcon House is the oldest residence, but it is also attached to the campus footprint. So some people prefer that. You're able to get to class without going outside from Falcon. You also do a small personality test. So you get matched with people who are similar to you. So if you're a very um, outgoing and loud and social person, you'll get matched with people who would be like-minded. If you're the opposite and you're an introvert and you wanna be in bed by 9 p.m. on Friday night, they're gonna match you with people in the same way. If you have friends coming to Fanshawe, whether you're coming from high school or from the community and you want to live with them, uh, you can request to live with people as well. These floors are co-ed, but the units specifically are not. So a four bedroom unit would either be all guys or all girls, but the next one over could be the opposite. Um, someone also asked about whether you would be living with people um, who are in your program. My understanding is that when you're completing the application, you can either select to live with people from your program or people from not in your program. So you could probably see the drawbacks and benefits to both, both choices. If you live with people who you're in school with, you have to accept the fact that you're going to be living with these people and seeing them almost 24 hours a day. If you're living with people who are not in your program, this might be new faces. So it might give you a chance to socialize a little bit outside of your program. So pros and cons to weigh, um, consider those things. Um, and then I would also just want to say too, that there are tons of ways to look at residents. So I mentioned the virtual tours. Um, we also have a, it's a slightly older video now, but it mostly shows up to date spaces on our YouTube, which you can watch. I'll show that maybe later during the Q and a, um, and then there are tons of uh, former Fanshawe students, current Fanshawe students who have shown their residences. I'm not going to show these here on the, the um, call just because I don't want to infringe on these people's privacy during this call, but feel free to go check those out after. Those are former students, so that might be a nice perspective. And Riker, just had a question here about the application mm -hmm. um, and how that works. So if you wanted to chat about that for a second. Uh, the application, yeah. So I think I went through the how the application works. Um, I think the thing that I missed there is you can't apply until you've accepted your offer. So you need to wait 48 hours, at which time the college um, brings you into the system, you get your student number and all of your web access. And once you have that, you can apply. So I'll go back to that apply now page. It is as simple as applying um, here on the website. So if you're a Canadian student, you contact the residence team, international student accommodation request form, but again, you do have to have accepted your offer and wait 48 hours to do this. And then you would go through that application process that I mentioned. Uh, this is a question that is, I think, relevant to now. How much um, houses are far from downtown campus? So the residences are on our campus. Downtown is about a 15 to 20 minute bus ride. It's a direct bus route, so no transfers. I used to bus quite a bit further as a student when I lived off campus. Uh, now saying that, there is tons of off-campus housing in the downtown area. And between us, sort of between us, is Western housing. So there's going to be a lot of student housing options downtown that are walkable to main campus um, or busable, depending on where you are. The bus system is not great for drivers in the London community, but it is excellent for bus, dri uh, bus takers, I will say that, as a former bus taker. So Devin, is there anything you need to, we need to add there, you think, about the application process? Sorry, just that you're, you have to accept your offer, and then you're going to get that... Uh, to Riker's point, read about two days there, and then you'll be able to access that. Um, trying to think what else we got. Um, there's a that. question from Sandra here that would be relevant. So you chose a townhouse when you applied. Um, so you're not guaranteed a townhouse space, but you are guaranteed a space in residence. So we try to accommodate people's direct requests. So we would prefer to put you in a townhouse if that's where you wanna be. But if we find ourselves in a situation where townhouses have filled already, we can't guarantee you'll get a spot there, but you can still get a spot in residence. And it, and it seems that uh, one, we have, you know, about 1200 spots in apartment style residences and probably about four to 500, I think in the, in the townhouses. So we have about around 1600 or so uh, total spots. So more people actually prefer the apartment style just based on where they're located on our campus. Like literally with our one residence, you don't have to walk outside. You literally just walk down the hallway and you're at your class. Uh, whereas the apartment style, you do have to cross the road and, or sorry for the townhouse style, you do have to cross the road and get there. So it's a matter of preference, but more people do tend to prefer, and we do have more spots in the apartment style residences. Yeah. Sandra, if you applied a couple months ago, I would say there's a very, very high chance that you will be in the townhouses because you're quite early in the game. 
Um, VATSAL fees are for eight months. So when you uh, apply to residence, you're living there for eight months. You're welcome to choose to live there beyond that, but that is what the residence application is for, is for the traditional eight month school year. Um, Western University is probably about a 10 minute drive from Fanshawe and probably about a 15 or 20 minute bus. So you can actually go all the way down Cheapside and end up virtually at the gate. So it's pretty efficient. There's a bike path to get there as well along the road. So um, it's not too bad for students that are maybe in a dual program or they wanna do social things at Western's campus. Um, Gavin, if you apply to residency, you can back out at a later date. So under normal circumstances, you would be losing your tuition deposit, or sorry, your, your um, residence deposit of $250. So that's what you would lose out on under normal circumstances. For this year with the COVID-19 situation, if you apply now and pay the $250 security deposit, they have assured us that they will be reimbursing those if we find ourselves in a situation where we can't house people safely come September. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have anything to add there, Devin? Well, I just, we, we want to maybe chat about parking. I don't know if we covered that yet. Yeah. Parking. That's something we should. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and cover parking, I think that's good to cover here. So basically with parking. So on our campus, pretty much almost every post-secondary education institution I've been to college or university always has some uh, parking challenges uh, just with regards to the number of people on our campus versus spots. So there is a parking lottery for residents. Uh, so some people will bring their vehicles. They can uh, kind of go through that lottery for uh, to get a spot and pay for it for the year. Uh, and with that, it really depends on how key your vehicle is to you. Um, all those things. If you are living in the community off campus, you'll have a parking situation that you have with your place. So you'll probably have a parking spot for a car that you may have. Uh, however, I would recommend if you can, uh, taking the bus to campus, it's a much more cost effective as in it's included in your tuition fees and your student card works as your bus pass all year round. Uh, so you're able to get back and forth very easily. This, the public transportation system works very well in London. Uh, so you can get around pretty recommend that versus trying to pay for your parking every day. Residents, there will be that lottery for those spots as well. Uh, yeah, another question that came up earlier is that uh, light housekeeping is included and it's a great question. What does light housekeeping mean? So when I do tours of residence for students under normal circumstances, I usually would define that as they will clean our things, but not yours. So a biweekly service will come in and they will clean the carpets, countertops, bathrooms, things of that nature, but they are not going to come in and do your dishes. They are not going to come in and tidy up your, your bedroom for you, things of that nature. So they're really there to preserve the cleanliness of the space um, for the college. I will also say though that um, many students do bring their own uh, linens and sheets for their beds, but you can apply to a service in which the lighthouse keeping service will change those for you at an extra cost. Um, and another amenity of residence is that there is laundry uh, facilities. They're quite accessible. There is laundry, I believe, on every other floor of the traditional buildings, and there is a laundry unit in the townhouse community. So it's there for you. It's about $2 a load. You load it onto your card. So uh, it's there for you to use. I even think in the townhouses, they have an uh, uh, app you can log in to see if any of the laundry machines are free, uh, which yeah. is impressive. Uh, so you don't walk outside and get there and realize that somebody, the, all the laundry machines are taken. Um, one thing I would add with the residences, I do believe with the apartment and or townhouse style, you have a very nice mix between your own privacy with your bedroom that uh, is secure. You only have the access to it. And then also... Uh, with the shared living spaces. So that's great. The bedrooms, double width bed, queen size length. You'll see them throughout this video. So they're a great uh, bed size if you're a, a taller individual. There is closet space in each room. Amazing for the apartment style residences, there's two bathrooms per unit. So you're only sharing a bathroom with one other person, which is great. As I mentioned, I was in dormitory style residence. So we had a gymnasium style bathroom that 32 uh, guys all shared together. So uh, this it's a, it's a really high comfort level. There's the bedroom right there that you can see. Uh, it comes with a desk and chair as well. Wireless provided throughout, cable included, TV in each suite, couch, table and four chairs, microwave and fridge. So uh, again, a really nice setup. Also, uh, excellent social programming. Uh, so you have acts, they do organized bus trips to get groceries so you can figure out where the grocery stores are at the start of the week. There's competitions between residences for 
athletics if that's what you're into. So lots of different services you connect into. There's residence life coordinators and upper year students that are employed by the residents to assist with student transition to, to uh, school and to residence, a lot of resources for assistance. And the d desks at each residence are 24 hour a day, seven day a week controlled entry as well as staffed. So if you have an emergency at night, you can pick up the phone, call the front desk and talk to a real person who can assist you. So that's really nice as well. Yeah, uh, two other things. One just uh, one came in the chat there. I would just say outright that the residence isn't really a family friendly space because you are just renting a bedroom um, and we don't really have any residences allocated for, for families. So what I would recommend if you are a family moving into the community here is to look at our off-campus housing directory and in fact, I would even look at Western's off-campus housing directory too, because there's quite a lot of options and find a house space that would be more accommodating to a family because you're gonna find the reality of residence here is that most of the people are going to be younger and it's not really going to be a um, family friendly space so much. This just doesn't really accommodate multiple people living together that way. So um, the other thing I was gonna mention is that if you are coming from out of town and you wanna have a guest, you're absolutely welcome to bring a guest to Fanshawe. Um, so you have eight times per month you can sign people in and they just have to be signed in after 9 p.m. So they're welcome all day, any day, but if they want to sleep over, they have to sign in to the front desk so that they uh, know that they're there and you can um, have them eight times a month. So it's pretty liberal policy that if you think about it, it's basically every weekend you could have a guest. Uh, which building is close to the electrical engineering technician classes? So. Maybe I'll show you, try to show you a map of campus at some point here, but um, it's not, <laughs> nothing is particularly far. Everything is basically attached to a single footprint within a 10, five, 10 minute walk. The residences are probably as far as possible from the electrical engineering space though. So that would be in the T building, which is in the Southwest corner of campus. And the residences will be in the Northeast corner of campuses. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose. They're all gonna be the same is what I would say to that. Yeah, so where if Riker's gonna pull up the little map here, if you can find one, uh, basically what you'll see with our residences is our residences, our apartment style residences, there's three buildings and they surround our student center, our Fanshawe Student Union Student Center, our athletics facility and our health and wellness center. So with that, you are literally steps away from our largest cafeteria on campus with a ton of options, uh, the support services of the student union, a pharmacy, a walk-in clinic, our fitness areas, our gyms, all those things are very close and equally close for all of those uh, apartment style residences. So if you're sick, you can get out, go to the walk-in clinic, get a prescription, pick up your prescription from the pharmacy, go get some chicken noodle soup and get back to bed all in about a hundred steps. Uh, so that's a really good setup to have. Uh, Riker showing it here. So you'll see R1, R2 and R3 are where our apartment style residences are. And you'll see, uh, across from our main gates where R4 is, those are the townhouses, okay? Uh, SC is our student center. The green area where J is our gyms and our health and wellness center. And then the question that was asked around the program area, and again, this is all accessible via hallways once you're into the camp main campus building, is B and T is where the electrical uh, programs would be as well as business. Uh, but again, you can cut across and, and get through hallways and all that fun stuff to get to get around fairly easily. And it's not like you're walking outside for blocks and blocks and blocks to get to class. Yeah, I can say from my experience that uh, it's pretty easy to get around Fanshawe once you figure out where you're going and it is all attached. So it's lovely for bad weather. Um, so I think, do we have any other questions we can answer here? Um, Did you, did you want to share our contacts, Riker? Yeah, let's do that. Um, if you guys have any other questions, um, there was a question about September intake for hands-on programs. We should probably get to some info about that right now. So um, while we're going here, we'll drop our, our emails in the chat so you can reach out to us after if you need. Um, there is not a detailed floor plan on the website. You can check the virtual tours and some of the videos to see them. So I don't know the exact square footage of the spaces, but you can take it from me. It's, it's pretty open. Um, they have 12 to 14 foot ceilings in them. They're, they're very spacious. So, uh, I don't have the direct measurements for you, but, um, believe us, they're, they're quite big compared to other residences. Um, so with regards to the COVID-19 situation, September intake, 
So we're dealing with May still, and we are going based on the guidelines that are set by the Ontario provincial government. So last week, the premier announced that uh, public schools will remain closed until May 31st. So we are remaining closed until May 31st as well. Any classes that are able to go online for the May intake, which starts next week, those are going online. Otherwise, they will have to be postponed. Same thing will happen for September, imagine, but we can't say definitively what will happen. I imagine if you're in a carpentry program and you can't come to campus, I, I think it would probably be postponed. Maybe you could do some of the learning online if it's theory-based. Do you know anything about that, Devin? I know we don't have actual information yet, but just maybe if you have a hunch or something. No, they're still, what they're trying to do is they're still trying to either determine um, those modifications for a lot of those programs, what, what are those options or scenarios? And again, that is often coming as the government evolves and changes its steps uh, for what is allowed and what we can do. Uh, so that's something that we're considering. Uh, I do know, and this is something we said earlier in the chat or in the presentation, is if your if we offer you an in-class seat and your program is modified or changes, we will be offering refunds as well. Uh, and the nice thing about the college system in Ontario is from how they typically do business, that is a joint situation for everybody. So basically they'll work together to ensure, um, I don't see one college offering something in class and another college offering it online. I think they would, they'll work together on that. That's speculation on my point, but that's how typically things like this have worked for the Ontario college system in the past, which is nice. Uh, so we'll work, I think the college and universities will continue to work with the government to ensure everybody's safe. Uh, we get everything started up when we're able to and that everybody's looked after from either a coming to school perspective, the alternatives and those refunds. Uh, deferments. What, um, typically, we don't do deferments. If you qualify one year, you'll usually qualify again. Um, I spoke to a person today that had their program postponed for one semester. I don't know if that will be the case in every program, though. So yeah, it's tough to have concrete answers about the September intake because we don't know what the world will look like then. Um, so all I can say is just stay, stay keeping in touch with Fanshawe, read the emails that they send. Um, as soon as we have information about the September intake, we will be releasing it to our, uh, to the public so they can know and make informed decisions. So I think we got all the questions from the session before I wrote them down here. I just um, had, if uh, you guys added... have questions following the. Sir, I just had one more question. Uh, just yeah, a sure. question. I kind of, which residence is better. And uh, so with that, uh, my advice is that in reality, all the apartment style residences are the floor plans are the same. Uh, our oldest residence was built in 1999. That's Falcon house or R1. Uh, so it's not even that old yet. However, it has the advantage of being connected via hallway right to the college. So there's a little bit of a positive there, even though it's kind of the oldest residence. I believe our other ones were built in 2005 and 2009, I think. Um, so they're all in great shape. Uh, I think some of the lounges are a little bit different for each of them, but however, I wouldn't say those are the most important things um, with regards to your accommodations as far as the apartments and things like that go. So every place has laundry. They all have a similar desk and entrance set up. They, they all have similar study spaces, all that fun stuff. So they, they do work out well that way. Uh, so Jacqueline just asked, she hasn't received her package yet from Fanshawe and she's accepted her offer. Should she still apply for residence? Uh, yeah, Jacqueline, I remember talking to you earlier in the week. Uh, yeah, I would apply to residence at this point. And the worst case scenario is they have to refund you your $250. Um, so go and do the application now if you can. Uh, and if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me after. Uh, currently the main intake students, how are they going to have their classes that need hands-on training? So any classes that we can offer online are being switched to an online format in the short term. And uh, if the, is there any classes that have been definitively canceled? I didn't read any notice about that. I think they've I think they've pushed start dates as of as of now currently with many of those yeah. and so they're just evolving uh, again playing it by by ear with the with coordinating with the government on, on when that'll be safe to have those students in the in the college. 
Um, yeah, the, another question here from Dito, when will we find out about res assignments? So usually the students for September move in over the, the Labor Day weekend and they will have a Friday, Saturday or Sunday move in time based on the last the first letter of their last name, just so it doesn't get too crazy on a specific day. Um, you don't really find out who your, um, your roommates are up until that point. But what a lot of people often do is they create residence Facebook groups beforehand. Um, this is not Fanshawe creating them, but students do this and they know their room specifically what building they're in. So they are able to share it and kind of figure out who each other are, um, from Facebook. So that's not done by Fanshawe, but that's the students in the community coming together to figure that stuff out. You usually find out all of where your room and your, that's in August. Usually it's not, it doesn't come early in the summer. It might be late July, early August. You'll find out about your residence assignment. Excellent. Any other questions? Yeah. I think we'll wrap it up here because we're a little over time. And uh, I posted the link to book an appointment with us and our colleagues in the recruitment team if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one time. And you can also email Devin and I at the emails I provided above. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about pathways. Pathways are a great opportunity for our Fanshawe students to graduate and move on to new programs, be them in the college, in the country, or even international. Lots of our students are taking those opportunities. So you can combine different kinds of education. So. If you're interested in Pathways, uh, join us next week. There'll be another up, uh, chance to update you guys on what's going on at the college as well. And uh, thanks for tuning in for, for this session. Take care.